We're recording this conversation in November 2021. A year from now, the world changes. The implementation of ISO 20022 to replace MT as the language of global payments is really going to shake things up. It's a difficult transition involving everybody involved in the payments chain, from payments operations people, product management, right the way through to the people who provide and maintain and operate the systems and technology that we use. A lot has been written about ISO 2002 as a theoretical benefit, but the conversations about ISO 2002 have been rather quieter. Biju from Fiorono Software and I, Andrew Muir from Nth Exception, have enjoyed many conversations about ISO 2002 implementation over the last few months, and we thought it would be a good idea, perhaps, to publish some of these conversations so that you were able to join in. We hope very much to participate in those chats and to develop them further as we investigate more layers of detail under the complex but wonderful world of ISO 2002 implementation. We really hope you enjoy it. One of the most widely expected benefits of the ISO 2002 transition is this idea of rich data. Bijou, is more data always the same as better data? Well, not exactly, Andrew. So more data is more data, lots of data. And I'd say ISO 2022 is essentially big data for payments. Uh, it could be better data, but you've got to process it. Uh, you've got to store it, you've got to filter it, you've got to understand it, and be able to work with those individual fields at a field level. There's a few things happening in industry. On the one hand, if you watch the recent announcement of Cybos or the Swift um, keynotes, it is all about better customer experience, better SDP, less of friction, instant settlement, all about better customer experiences and eventually better customer propositions. Now, on the other hand, if you move away to the opposite side of things, which is in terms of what's happening in open banking, there's a lot of change happening there. And to the extent that banks are beginning to reassess how they go about their customer acquisition, because for the first time ever, they are under threat from data smart, agile, cloud first, API first, fintechs and big techs. Now, on the one hand, I think Swift are doing a great job in terms of moving the industry forward towards their API first vision in terms of, in terms of Swift GPI. We're seeing things in terms of the distributed ledger innovation happening. But step back for a moment, for all of this to work, and for a bank to be able to deliver a better proposition that is more customer focused than product focused, you need data. Now, open banking by, by itself will give you access to a certain amount of data. And as an open banking participant, whether you're a fintech or a bank trying to play a fintech role, you get access to a certain amount of data. And given that we're in the UK, I think we have access to much more higher quality of data than what's happening with open banking in many countries globally at the moment, only because of the fact that we've been doing it for longer than a lot of other countries. Uh, everyone's catching up and there's a very short maturity cycle that you'll see. But open banking gives you some amount of data. Now, given the fact that today a lot of banks are having to re reevaluate their, not just their customer propositions, but their very business model and their role in the new banking ecosystems. Given the changes that ecosystem banking and open banking are bringing to the picture, to the table, I'd say banks are in a better position than anybody else to leverage the data that's in ISO 22. If you think of a scenario where you can almost overlay ISO metadata on top of open banking data, that's transformational. And I'm, we've not seen too many people think about it on those lines yet, but I think that's just, it's just a matter of time. I think very soon you're going to see that. A big topic today is embedded finance. Now, as a software infrastructure company of Fiorano, we do integration, we do API management. It's all native to Fiorano. So we, we are a great backend or a supply side platform for open finance. But if you, and, and, and that an open finance proposition is delivered through channels, so hence APIs. But if you think back as to what that proposition is going to be, it's going to be data led. So coming back to your point, ISO has that potential to be able to deliver to a bank or a fintech or a corporate or anybody that really meaningful 
metadata around payment and about the, around the customer for a bank to leverage and do a lot more with. Long answer to a short question, I know, but the potential is huge. It's a matter of, I think, what's done with the data. Oh, I see what you mean. You're really talking about the difference between data as simply a large collection of fields and insight gleaned from a properly organized repository of information coming from transaction channels of various different types, centralized and harmonized so that you can use it. Absolutely, absolutely. So going back to the point we discussed earlier in terms of better liquidity, better cash management, it's not going to happen automatically. Just by throwing a lot of ISO messages into a data warehouse, you're not going to get all that out of it. But you need to be able to distill it properly, pass it, understand it, strip it down, get down to a, the, the field by field level understanding and access to that data. And that's when the real magic happens. Magic. That you, that's, that's really interesting because it's the happy path that we all speak about when we're talking about uh, innovation and the exciting evolution of ISO 2802 implementation. I think what we ought to talk about next is what happens when things go wrong. <laughs>